Hey there, and thank you for joining me on the Retro Game Couch. And in today's video, I'm going to show you something very cool using the PC you see here in the background. You might recognize it as a PC that we repaired on the channel here. It's the first PC that I ever owned. And this is how I would typically use a PC back in the day, using a monochrome CRT monitor. But now I have something very cool to add to this PC. Let me get it. It's a complete in box monochrome LCD monitor from the same brand as the computer. It's from 1989, so it's very old LCD tech and I can't wait to show it to you. So, let's go. Looking at the box, it follows the same design line as the new media system computers from Philips. And it says Philips Professional Monochrome LCD for Computer. And then on the side, it says here the retail price is 2,000 guilders, which adjusted to inflation and euros, of course, is around 2,000 euros. And then here it says LCD monitor 640 by 400 pixels. The real resolution is 640 by 200 pixels, which is the maximum resolution for CGA graphics. And it's using line doubling to get the 400 pixels. PM11211 slash 00R or 00R, made in Taiwan. Here again, it says 640 by 400 pixels resolution. And here it also says max eight gray levels. So here's a closer look at the Philips PM11211 and I must say it looks really modern for something from 1989. The overall look it's just it's a very cool looking monitor and dimension wise I think it's it's really amazing but we'll get to that in a moment. As you can see there are very thick bezels around the screen. The screen diameter is 25.5 centimeters which is 10 inches. And then the screen is 32 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters tall. Here is the only adjustment you get for this monitor and this is the brightness knob. And on the front you can see there is a port which we will circle back to in a moment. The monitor can rotate and it can also pivot. And as I was saying before about the look of the screen, these silver side strips make it look really premium. And the screen is only three and a half centimeters thick, which I think is amazing. On the back is a flat cable going from the base of the monitor to the screen itself. And this carries the video signal and the power. And it is an external cable because this monitor of course has this rotation mechanism. Finally, there's only one cable coming from the monitor and that does data and also does the power. And it does one additional thing, which is the port on the front. And on the end of the cable is this big beefy 25 pin connector that goes to the interface card. The monitor weighs 3.2 kilograms. Let's see what's inside the box of this interface card. It's the AVQ100 slash 00R. Computer interface card for IBM XT AT compatible PCs for CGA color monitor and Philips LCD monitor. You get these cables. You get the graphics card itself. You get schematics with signals and which connection does what. That's really awesome. Comes with a manual. Yeah, this is all in Dutch, so. And then here is the software on a floppy and on a disk. The first order of business is to remove the CRT monitor, remove the graphics card that is inside here and replace that graphics card with the interface card. Here's the XT IDE that I'm using as a hard drive. And here is the graphics card. I'm also going to remove this extra cover here. 
I will explain that in a moment. The graphics card has two outputs, one is a CGA port and the other one is a port for the LCD monitor. And with these two jumpers you can set which one of the outputs you want to use and in which mode you want to set them. And you can either set the CGA port to mono or color or you can set the LCD to MDA or CGA. Currently it is set to output on the LCD port in CGA mode. I have inserted the card and as you can see there is a port here which is for keyboard pass through. So you use the supplied cable. Put that side in the port and this side you put in your keyboard connector. And now this port here on the bottom not only does video and power but also does keyboard pass through. The system is reassembled and ready to use but I'm not going to put it here on the desk. I'm going to use it as Philips intended it for this monitor. So I'm going to put it on the ground. Now all we need to do is connect a keyboard to the pass through port on the monitor itself. Now keyboards from that era all use this big DIN plug. Luckily it comes with a little converter cable which converts the DIN to that Philips connection. But since I'm using a Philips keyboard, I'm going to use the other cable that is supplied. So yeah, it turns on and looking at the screen right now, this is a passive matrix display which makes sense considering the era. I did install the software that came with this. The interface card doesn't need any drivers, but you can use this utility to change the modes in which the LCD monitor works. So normally it is set to gray levels normal mode. You can set it to gray levels inverted. Then you can set it to hatching normal mode and hatching reverse mode. And these two are probably only interesting for uh, office work. So these are grayscale levels and hatching is just using black and white and then some kind of dithering to get the other grayscales. So let's first set it to normal mode and play a game. This is interesting, if you do a control alt delete it remembers the last setting you did with the all command. So it's still in inverted mode. While if I do a cold reboot, I'm pretty sure we revert back to the default mode. To better test text, I set the output mode of the LCD to MDA, so mono display adapter. If you do the all command, you can see it is set for MDA mode now. And this looks really sharp. Let's switch to inverted mode. This is my absolute favorite mode for text. And this is very, very crisp. Very clear. Yeah, this is, this is very, very nice. Yeah, this looks amazing. This is probably how businesses use it in MDA mode. I did try the monitor and the card on a few different systems and while it initially seemed to be working, the BIOS info was displaying just fine. As soon as the BIOS handed over the display to the operating system, the LCD screen turned off and the output was probably switched to the color CGA port. Just for the sake of being complete, here is the computer hooked up with the CGA port. I have a DAC in the CGA port going to a converter 
which converts it to VGA. And here you can see CGA mode is working fine. So this was a close look at the Philips PM11211, a monochrome LCD monitor from 1989. And it's such a cool piece of technology from that era. I love it and I would have loved it as a kid hooked up to my computer. It was unaffordable to me, of course, for that price, but I would have been the coolest kid on the block with this hooked up to my PC. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe consider becoming a patron. And I hope to see you next time on the Retro Game Couch.